talk to me, they look right through that morning. serious mental health issues. Anorexia. Borderline personality disorder, um, OCD. Work anxiety. Asperger's. Self-esteem or self-worth or a feeling of uselessness. So bipolar. Depression. 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 My name is Kelly. I'm the president of the Students' Union at Sussex. I'm speaking today about some of my own experiences. Um, so for a few years I've suffered from depression. Um, I finally got my diagnosis in my third year and that kind of came out of me having a bit of a breakdown actually. In 2011 I started at Exeter University studying psychology um, but I had to withdraw after the first term because I had been suffering from anorexia um, since 2008. That was when I was first diagnosed. Um, and it got really bad sort of when I got to Exeter I felt really isolated I was in a flat where I couldn't speak to any of my flatmates. I've got a few friends who I know suffer from mental health and I've spoken to other people um, kind of about them and people just kind of write it off as them possibly being like rude or lazy and they just uh, don't really understand because it's not something that's personally affected them. I think it is quite hard unless you know somebody or um, you have a personal relationship with somebody who has mental health, it is quite hard to understand. Mental health is quite important to me because uh, since I was eight years old my mum was diagnosed with what was then called manic depression but it's now bipolar disorder. Okay, my name is Tori, I'm Head of Marketing and Development at the Students' Union and I've suffered from anxiety and panic attacks before. So I'm the Operations Officer for the Student Union. During my time at university I um, was diagnosed with work anxiety. Um, so I was struggling in my first year um, and when things hit ahead at the end of, uh, not the end, the middle of second year I sort of realised, okay something's really up. I was you know, having trouble getting out of bed because I was afraid of the day and I was, um, it was affecting me physically and I was becoming quite ill. Since the age of 14 I've been suffering with mental health issues. I wasn't really sure what was actually wrong with myself. Um, I used to self-harm quite a lot and had a lot of thoughts about suicide. My mum herself wasn't very well and she used to take it out a lot on me. I was physically, emotionally and mentally abused as a child and that still affects me a lot now. I used to work uh, in a community centre. I used to manage um, a lot of volunteers and they were people who um, were long-term unemployed, possibly had a, a history of uh, drug issues, alcohol abuse um, and various other things. In certain aspects of society you might then have people saying, well these people are sponges, they're on benefits, they're not working. But I think that shows a real lack of understanding and ignorance um, towards people who are actually contributing massively towards their local community, which obviously being an area of deprivation um, needs, needs those people. Hi, I'm Juliet. I'm the Education Officer at the Students' Union. Um, there's always been a history of mental health problems in my family. Um, my mum has been depressed for as long as I can remember. My sister was anorexic. Um, and when I was 14, this kind of all piled up and I tried to kill myself. Um, and spent a few weeks in the hospital and then got moved to a psychiatric unit, which I stayed in for six months. My name is Mark Bushby. I'm the finance director of the University of Sussex Student Union. I'm actually being interviewed today um, because I actually do have what's considered a mental health condition and I have Asperger's. My name's Ben and I am um, a student trustee and a volunteer and um, I've got quite a lot of mental health experiences, mainly over the last 12 months. It kind of all kicked off about 12 months ago when I started, like, I wouldn't say getting depressed because I didn't recognise it as that at the time, but getting really down and like out of character. That's, that's part of the, was part of the trigger is that like, if you started behaving in a certain way or you got yourself so psyched up and then you were worried about what people were thinking of how you were behaving as well. I had a panic attack once in a car with somebody who wasn't aware that I felt that way and then I started trying to hide it and suppress it and then I was getting more worried about them thinking that I was being weird and rather than just saying can you stop the car I just need to calm myself down I just let it really escalate out of control. Uh, my name is Mike Riley. I work in the Students' Union. I'm the Director for Membership Support and Activities. 
but I'm also a um, part-time uh, postgraduate uh, PhD student here at Sussex. I had, a, I had chronic fatigue about diagnosed about three or four years ago and that followed on from, and that was probably related to a prior diagnosis for depression um, because the two are quite often linked. There's, there's loads of causal factors but uh, mental health is one of them. And like gradually my weight just started dropping off again. Um, I had just literally managed to get from like being underweight to a normal weight and um, it just started plummeting again and I got back at Christmas and I was thinking no I'm not going back. Yeah my experience have actually been very good. Um, I, it was something that I got suggested that I may have um, around about a year and a half ago. Uh, it was something I was unsure what to do with in that respect, how to take it. And I actually went along to my GP to actually uh, see if I can actually get a referral or some help and I didn't really know what, in what form that would actually be. One of my friends, um, just when my mum came out of hospital the first time, um, after she was sectioned, when she first got diagnosed, um, said to me, I'm not coming around to your house because your mum's mental. And when you're like nine years old or something, I was just like, how can I? It just straight away like, makes you think I can't tell people this. This is something I have to hide from people. Like it's a secret. Um, I'm Hazel. Um, I've got OC like few years back then, five to six years back then. Like I just keep having like, like, like having thoughts, bad thoughts, and like just repeating like stuff, like, like switching off like lambs and stuff like that. It got pretty out of control. Like I wasn't eating at all some days, and at one point I just um, passed out in the supermarket. They told me in the ambulance that like your behaviour is like anorexic. Basically, they didn't obviously quite want to diagnose that but they called it like an anorexic tendency and obviously at the same time I was suffering with depression and soon after the first suicide attempt came really. Depression was and can still is a feeling of really not having any energy or ability to think properly or do anything. It's just a bit like a black cloud, it really is. My family don't really respect mental health, they don't really think it's an actual issue. Even though quite a few people in my family have it, they don't really see it as something that you should be suffering from. They just think you should pull up your sleeves and get on with life and stop being so depressed with everything. So I think I started really struggling with mental health when I was 17 and that was, I think, something that came out of some stuff that happened at home and, and some experiences I had. Um, but I didn't do anything about it and I think I didn't do anything about it because I was partially afraid and also because I think I felt some shame and I was a bit too proud to go and you know, admit I had a problem to do something about it. Um, and it was something that I experienced on and off for a few years um, and it wasn't until my third year when I was actually 23 um, with the encouragement of my friends that I went to um, the doctors. Um, I was kicked out at the age of 18. I moved into YMCA accommodation. I then came to university. Um, I figured out I was suffering with depression when I was 18 years old. And I told my mum and she just laughed in my face. <laughs> um, thinking back on it now, it was people were amazingly accepting and helpful. Even if I was struggling with the idea myself, my friends sort of, when I told them about it, sort of said, I always knew something was up with you <laughs> in kind of a friendly, jokey way. And I was like, oh, did you? And they were just like, yes, you're obsessed with work. I think what the difficult thing was for me in like getting help that I needed and like recognising it was just because but until then I'd had no experience of it. I've got no family history of it or anything. I just didn't know about mental health. Like, I didn't, well, I knew that depression existed as a thing, but I didn't know what it was. I, like the things that I was suffering from I didn't recognise as health problems, just kind of general mood problems or perhaps personality problems. Growing up, I mean that becomes quite a complex issue. Uh, even though there was, um, for example, subjects at school I was incredibly good at, mostly uh, mathematics and numbers, actual social intervention was something I, it just didn't come naturally to me. Um, I self-harmed from the age of about 12 um, to 18 um, and for the first two years no one knew about it and um, in fact the moment that people found out it was it kind of was helpful in a way even though it was really kind of deeply distressing and then going into hospital actually and meeting um, other teenagers who were at the kind of same like very low point was really inspiring just to know, know that I wasn't on my own. I haven't self-harmed for about six years, but my scars are still pretty obvious. And 
especially in the summer when I get a tan. And uh, it's really odd. I get asked about them quite a lot. Like, probably a month doesn't go by where I don't get asked what's on your arms. And I'm, I kind of like that they start the conversation, that people ask me what they are. And then I've had people tell me that they're really pleased that I um, go around with short sleeves and I'm really, I don't try and hide them at all. And a lot of people have said, oh, that's really inspiring. It means that I won't always have to hide my scars. Um, and so, yeah, that's kind of a proud thing that I can do without even having to earn any effort. A lack of understanding leads, you know, leads to persecution, if you like, and it's very easy to sort of pass judgment on people when you don't understand possibly their, their motives or how they feel um, and their past history. It actually answered a lot of questions in my past, things I've not understood. Without going into too much detail, um, I've been through a broken relationship, my marriage broke down. I did not understand why, I couldn't see what the issues or problems were, but um, I've begun to piece together some of the issues and problems and realise that um, communicating with an NT person is actually quite challenging at times. Yeah, I believe like, if people t talked about it more openly, like, especially more guys, like, hardly any guys talk about it, they just think, oh, stiff upper lip, that's the typical British thing to do. You know, not a lot of people actually talk about it and they're too scared to talk about it in fear of what people think. I don't tell a lot of people I suffer with mental health issues in fear of what they think of me because sometimes when I tell them the look on their face just says it all. Obviously it is very upsetting but still there is I think a lot of stigma around mental health and people are often misunderstood and people don't even think about the possibility that some people might be experiencing mental health issues, might be having mental health issues. People are frightened to talk about how they feel uh, for a variety of different reasons. Sometimes people um, I think it's maybe soft, you know, certain, certain demographics may think it's soft, don't talk about your emotions, you know, it's quite an old fashioned sort of uh, male characteristic, I suppose, um, but it's actually certainly not, no, no benefit to bottling things up. I think it's more, far more common for males to have that mentality of stiff upper lip and not to talk about your emotions and to be quite, almost sometimes quite emotionally stunted, um, yeah, without, without a doubt. Yeah, another thing that kind of like on my first suicide attempt what was hanging over me was like the coming out experience and like telling my parents that obviously that I was gay and that perhaps they might not like it and that my wider family might not like it when like when I told them which was pretty much as they came running to the hospital like even though it was like I couldn't even use the word but I told them and it felt like so much like so much better and so liberating and like such a weight off my mind and I was so much less anxious and even though I still kind of suffer from depression for other reasons like that feeling of relief is so useful so I would say to people that are in that situation where coming out is difficult that it will get better it will be the hardest thing you ever have to say to someone possibly but it will get better and even if the reaction is a little bit difficult like they'll come around to it and it will be such, it will relieve such a burden on you and improve your mental health so much. I think the worst thing is feeling on your own, feeling isolated and actually not feeling that there's anybody who gets it or anybody understands or anybody you can talk to. People will have like different pro problems in their lives, like some people have like, I don't know, fi financial issues, some people have like different issues and some people have mental, ha mental health issues and I think it's like it's all right to be not okay and like it's really important to tell other people about it like share and because like they form a support network that is really important to help recovering and help um, just overcome like the issues. I think it's about people being able to talk about it. Um, in our office, we, uh, we someone started talking about um, feeling anxious, and then everybody, everyone else chipped in with like, "Oh, I felt like that before. I've had that. I've suffered from depression. I've suffered from this." Until you start having that conversation, you're not, you don't realise how common it is that people are suffering from these um, these everyday anxieties, these these mental health issues, and just not talking about them. There is some provision for student support and, um, and within student services here, but I don't think for 13,000 odd students, I don't think it's anywhere near enough. Um, and actually, I think if, if as a sort of as a result of this campaign, if, if the levels increased to where they could do, they were going to be swamped. <laughs> because I think that the levels of levels of you know kind of mental health issues, stress, and so on, are quite high and a lot higher than they're ever declared. 
I'm Sophie, I'm the Welfare Officer at the Students' Union. Time to Change campaign was started up when um, the University and the Union signed the joint Time to Change pledge. And Time to Change is an organisation that works to end a stigma around mental health. Having been in that situation myself, um, I thought it would be a really good idea to set up Sussex Student Minds, um, a society for um, people who do suffer from mental health illnesses to sort of like have some support. I had learnt a lot from myself and sort of I knew where there were areas sort of in general, not just in Sussex, sort of in general, where they could be improved. And I just thought going straight to professional services for students can be really intimidating because then they have to admit that, you know, there might be something wrong. And sometimes, you know, they don't really want to do that. So um, having a society which is sort of student-led lowers kind of, you don't have to go up to that level. It kind of introduces an intermediate level. I think getting involved in this campaign has been one of the most important things for me. I pretty much tell everyone about it now because it's not a secret, it's a part of my life and the fact that I think is actually really good for my mum, that she knows all the work I do with the campaign and she's kind of really proud of me that I'm speaking up about it because she, she, knows, she knows all the problems herself. I don't really care about like what like other people think about my behaviour or yeah and just I'm just be myself, just be myself. I would say like it's a really beneficial way to like push yourself to get help, to think of your mental health problem as a physical health problem. And when people are saying to you like, oh, you're depressed, maybe you should just like get out of bed or do, do whatever. Just remember that if you, if you had a broken leg, they wouldn't say, just, just go for a run. Like, so that kind of like pushes you to get help. Being diagnosed with uh, work anxiety was quite a bit of a shock to get used to that label. Um, but I think in the end I learned to embrace it because it meant that I got the help that I needed um, and counselling got me, got me through university it really, um, you know, just having someone to talk to and having that different perspective off the back it was really helpful. I think the services here are, are excellent um, and even though counselling initially only offers six sessions, um, if you're really struggling you can go back and they'll, they'll offer you more. I've never really thought of it positively before, it was just something that happened to me um, and I didn't really tell people about it because it sounds a bit weird. And, um, thinking of how far I'd come and how much I would never have expected to have even graduated, let alone have a job in the Students' Union, um, let alone go to university. Um, it was a really nice thing to reflect and think that actually those experiences kind of contributed to my success rather than took away from it. Actually working here, I've had a lot of support and I'm actually very pleased. I'm not scared to tell people about um, actually having Asperger's. It's, if anything, it's something I'm actually proud of. And most of my heroes, if you actually have a look through uh, the great scientists, artists, musicians, and my ultimate hero, Sherlock Holmes, they're all uh, believed to actually uh, have suffered from Asperger's. So I actually see it as a gift, not a, not a problem. I'm overwhelmed by the response that we've got to this campaign and a lot of people um, are signing up as volunteers as they hear about it. Um, whenever we put new stuff out there we get an amazing response. I, I didn't know this existed, I want to get involved, what can I do? Which is really, really great and in comparison to some other campaigns I must say that there's really a demand for this type of work. Um, so that's really, really good to see. I found since being at Sussex my weight has remained at normal sort of levels and I found it, the support here has been outstanding and um, I do not regret changing at all, sort of coming here and I just wish that I'd come here sooner to be honest. This campaign was recognised by the National Union of Students as a nationally leading campaign on mental health and compared to other universities we're quite far along in our journey in this campaign and um, I'm really glad to see that all the hard work that the volunteers have put in is being recognised in that way. People do suffer with it and it's just another factor of life. It's absolutely okay for everyone to have a blip in their life, to have you know days when you can't get out of bed and to have weeks where you're not feeling particularly great and able to go out and do stuff. But that doesn't have to affect what you do for the rest of your life. Let's talk about mental health. Don't hide your scars, it's time to change. Hi, my name's Amber Roberts and I'm happy to talk about mental health and I think it's a change at the University of Sussex. It's time to talk, it's time to change. Let's talk about mental health differently. Don't be afraid to talk about mental health. I've suffered from mental health problems and I'm willing to talk about it. Mental health, let's talk about it. It's time to change.
Will you help me? 